Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. And this is question number eight from the October 2019 International A-Level at Excel Core Mathematics C12 paper. And this is also a question that I've put in my uh, Cambridge um, Endotopic Worksheet for P1. Question number four from the um, Equations of Circles Worksheet. Now, Equations of Circles is a relatively new topic in the Cambridge um, AS syllabus. So that's why I've taken some questions here from the Edexcel, which are you know related to this topic so it says here question number eight part a so you have a circle has equation x squared plus y squared minus 6x minus 14y plus k equals zero where k is a constant find the coordinates of the center of c so we know that when we express um, an equation of the circle in the form x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared then the a and B here are the center of the circle. So what we need to do is complete the square. I mean, to answer part A, we could do it quite easily because we know when we complete the square, we take half of the coefficient of X and Y for when we complete the square for the X's here. So I, I know that the coefficient, the, the coordinate is going to be three. It's going to be half of this and the opposite sign and a half of this and the opposite sign. So it's going to be three, seven. We can see that straight away from the equation. But it's always best to show your steps and we might need to have an expression for the radius which will be easier for us to do if we have completed the square. So what I would do is I would complete the square even though we can see the answer is going to be 3, 7 um, straight away. So we have x squared minus 6x plus y squared minus 14y equals minus k. So I've just gathered the x squared and x terms together next to each other and the constants I have. Um, made sure that they're on the other side so i had to subtract k to do that now i'm going to complete the square for the x so i have x minus three squared and then i've got to take away nine completing the square for this you have to take away the square of what's inside here that will give me x squared minus six x plus nine minus nine which gives us that and then we're going to have the same thing for here y minus seven squared i've got to take away the square of seven which is 49 and that's equal to negative k so now i can say that x minus 3 squared plus y minus 7 squared is equal to that's going to be um, minus 9 minus 49 is, is minus 58 if I add that to both sides I'll have 58 minus k so I can see as I mentioned first the center is going to be 3 7 so there's the answer to part a it says find the coordinates of the center of c and we've done that now moving on to part b it says find the radius of c when k equals negative 32 so as we mentioned um, the radius the, the square of the radius is 58 minus k this is the square of the radius okay so when k equals negative 32 r squared is going to be 58 minus minus 32 so r squared is going to be 58 plus 32 which is um, going to be 90 90 58 plus 32, that's 80, plus 10, 90. So therefore, we can say the radius is going to be the square root of 90, which we're going to express in its simplified third form. We see that there's a 9 in here, so you're going to have 9 times 10. So you have root 9 times root 10, so you end up with 3 root 10. That, that's the exact value of the radius of the circle. They didn't say exact value, but I, I guess it's best to write it as the exact value so there's a radius and there's the center so that's part a and b pretty simple now for part c it says find the range of values of k for which c lies completely within the first quadrant so i'm going to make a little sketch just to picture what's happening here so we've got our x-axis a y-axis sorry and our x-axis the corners of the center of the circle are 3, 7. Let's say it's up here somewhere. Now, the first quadrant is this area here. First quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. So the first quadrant is like the place where the both X and Y are positive. So for the circle to lie completely within the first quadrant, then basically it has to be such that the circle doesn't even touch the Y axis because... It's going to touch the y-axis before it touches the x-axis because the distance to it is 3. So basically, we can see that for this 
to be within the first quadrant, then the radius has to be less than um, three. It has to be less than three. The radius, the radius must be less than three. Otherwise, if it's more than three or three or more, it will touch the, the y-axis and it will go out of range. It will be out of the first quadrant. It has to be completely within the first quadrant. And we also know that the radius must be greater than zero. For sure, the radius ha can't be um, uh, you know, less than zero. It doesn't make sense. So you have to have the radius less than three and more than zero. So we can say that the square of the radius must be between zero and nine. And we know the radius is always something positive. So we don't have any issues with um, you know, squaring these numbers. So we know that the radius must be greater than nine and less than zero. And we know that the radius squared Okay, we don't know k is negative 30. We've got to find what k is. We know that the radius squared from our original equation is 558 minus k. That's r squared. So r squared is 58 minus k. We know that. Right, now part c, of course, we're not taking k as negative 32. We, we have to find the values of k for which this new situation is true, that the circle is only within the first quadrant. So the radius must be less than... Um, three units so the square of the radius must be less than nine so we can say that zero has to be less than 58 minus k which is r squared okay and that has to be less than nine so if we solve this inequality what i can do is i can subtract 58 from both sides so i got this nine minus 58 is minus 49 right um yeah let me just Confirm that. 9 minus 58, negative 49. And then what we've got to do is, because there's a negative one, we want a positive k, we've got to divide the whole inequality by negative k, by negative 1, sorry, by negative 1. Now, if we divide an inequality by a negative number, or we multiply by a negative number, then we have to basically change the direction of all the inequality signs. So when I divide this by negative 1, this becomes 58. This becomes greater than, this becomes k, and this becomes greater than, this becomes 49. So to make my answer look a bit more sensible than this, we always normally write the lower number first. So we know k must be between 49 and 58. Okay, if k is between 49 and 58, then the radius will be greater than 0, and it will be less than 3. Okay, and there's the answer for this question. Okay, so that will cause this circle to lie completely within the first quadrant. Uh, so the radius is less than 3 and more than 0. Okay, so there's the answer to part C of this question from the um, October 2019 C12 paper um, from the International A-Level. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from this end-of-topic worksheet on equations of circles from my Cambridge um, P1 um, collection can be found in the playlist over here. Um, other questions to do with uh, equations of circles from a P1 from P1 of Cambridge can be found here and from P1 of LXL can be found there and you can um, watch a video which tells you how to use my channel efficiently to find what you're looking for by clicking on the link that will be appearing on the card at the top of the page. Thank you for watching and see you soon.